This week on Vice, the race to wipe out polio in Pakistan. Just a year ago, one of the vaccinators was assassinated in this neighborhood for doing this work. And then, the lingering terror of war in Southeast Asia. The Vietnam War left millions of unexploded ordnance in the ground. The development of a polio vaccine was one of the greatest successes of modern medicine. New infections fell from hundreds of thousands per year to almost zero. But in Pakistan in recent years, the disease has actually spiked. So we went to Karachi to find out why. Vaccinating against polio is incredibly simple. Each, each kid is getting two drops. How many times do they have to get that before they're vaccinated? And that's all it takes. A few drops in a child's mouth several times. Polio is a highly contagious disease that spreads through contact with infected human feces. In countries like Pakistan, where almost 70 million people don't have access to adequate sanitation, it can run rampant. The virus affects thousands of people here. In acute cases, it can cause permanent paralysis, often affecting the legs and spine. Almost every other country on Earth has eradicated the disease. Nigeria was declared polio-free last year, and Afghanistan is very close. Pakistan had the most new cases by far in 2015. The reason for this is that some families refuse the vaccine, often believing in conspiracy theories about it being a foreign plot to harm Muslims. Throughout Pakistan, an army of female health workers goes door to door trying to make sure every child is safe. It's a job that only women can do, because in the more conservative areas, only they are allowed into families' homes. The vaccinators have been here. See their chalk markings. Total so the next house we're going to is a house where apparently the family have said no to taking the vaccine in the past. And what do you think their plan is? But you've seen no evidence that this is funded by Israel and no evidence that this is going to make people impotent. But you believe that these women who have dedicated their lives to vaccinating children are agents of Israel. What's your reaction to that? We spoke to Haji Sada Khan, who lives in an area where several families have refused drops. When did she first start getting ill? When the, um, the vaccination teams came to this house, 
Did, did your family allow her to get the drops into her? Well, we parked the car. The cycle band is in the car. The sun is not on. The sky is not on. The sun is not on. The sun is so her grandfather has somehow been given the impression that she's going to make a full recovery. Um, I think what's going to happen is her, her central nervous system is going to stop sending the right messages to her muscles, and her muscles are going to start wasting away. The local vaccination teams have said that this house used to be a, a refusal house. Um, so maybe someone in this family um, refused to let her get her drops. We followed the family to Karachi's biggest children's hospital to see a doctor who could confirm whether or not the little girl had polio. Okay, I'm going to see her here. What's the matter, Baba? What's going on? Now, you don't have to take your tongue? No, no, it's the same. 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 बिल्कुल भी नहीं, बैठ भी नहीं सकता, हाँ, छोड़ दो जाता, छोड़ दो, आप छोड़ दो, तब ये कब से है ये कमजोर? पटुन ये वाला कला है, तो अफसोस की बात है, मगर ये के हकीकत है, तो आपको बतानी जरूरी है। जो टेस्ट हुए हैं उससे ये बात पता चल गई है अब के इसके अंदर पोलियो के असरात हैं इसका इलाज दुनिया में कहीं नहीं होता है अल्लाह ताला आपको सेहत दे आपके बच्चों को भी खुश रखे और हम सब को दुआ है कि आपको भी आपके खानदान को और पूरे पाकिस्तान को इस बीमारी से बचाएं अब आने वाले वक्त में there are actually a number of uh, reasons why people uh, refuse vaccination. The first reason is that there is some myth of uh, making people infertile by giving this kind of vaccination. And then there was this issue about Osama bin Laden getting caught and somehow that was linked to the, to the whole polio campaign. The United States is acknowledging that a doctor held in Pakistan on suspicion of treason was working for the CIA to find Osama bin Laden. Dr. Shaquille Alfredi, posing as a vaccinator, obtained DNA samples confirming bin Laden's identity. He is currently serving a 33-year prison sentence in Pakistan. To find out what effect the bin Laden raid had, we went to one of Pakistan's largest madrasas, Jamia Benoria. There we met with Mufti Naeem, one of the country's most influential Islamic scholars. So Pakistan ka pehla main mufti hu. Jo maine ye fatwa diya tha ke tamam Pakistani aur unko chahiye ke apne bacho ko polio ke tatre pilaye. After the Bin Laden raid, when the CIA had used the uh, hepatitis vaccinator to verify he was living in that compound, did more people believe that the polio vaccine was actually harmful to them? Uski wajah se logon ka zehn jo hai, aur zyada masbut ho gaya ki ye log polio muhim ke naam se ek intelligence ka aur mukhbiri ka kam kar rahe. Pakistan ke tamam sanjida tapkar, jo dine Islam par yakin rakhte hain, wo polio ke mukhalif. सबसे आया बात है कि पूजु के रूप में पूजु के देवास में पूजु के शिकन में हम में जितना नुकसान पहुंचा है हमारी तारीख को हमारी तहजीब को हमारी जेहाद को ये पूज रही था ये सबसे बड़ा नुकसान है जो पूजे से हमें पहुंचा है। Statements like these have consequences. Since 2012, more than 80 polio workers and their security have been murdered for doing this job. So this is the uh, neighborhood medical center. There's a serious amount of security here. Dozens of heavily armed policemen. It seems insane that they should need this much security for such a, such a noble job. The entire police force for this area and some army rangers are dedicated to their security. But what do you think about the fact that you need this much security? 
just two days later, a suicide bomber attacked another polio vaccination center, killing 15 people. In January of 2014, close to a dozen gunmen on motorbikes attacked a polio team in Karachi, killing three vaccinators. Salma Jaffa was lucky to survive. I was polio drop I was drunk and I was drunk and I was drunk. और उसके बाद उन्होंने मेरी बहुत अच्छी मेरी बैक स्प्रेंड थी मेरी दोस्त उन्होंने एक गोली मारी जो उसके यहाँ बिल्कुल चेहरे पे लगी उसके उससे पहले मेरी दो गोलियाँ मेरी यहाँ लगी इधर ये मेरी ये मेरी जगह ये दो गोलियाँ मेरी यहाँ लगी जो मेरी साइड से निकली है And do you know if they specifically came after you and targeted you and your colleagues? वो बस मारने ही पोलियो � और उन्होंने पहले सेंटर में जाके पूछा है कि पोलियो टीम निकल गई तो उन लोगों ने कहा हाँ निकल चुकी है लेकिन ये नहीं पता था कि ये मारने के लिए आ रहे हैं। Would you go back to doing the same work again? कोई ऐसी बात नहीं है तो खिसमत है बच्चों की और ज़ाहिर बात है करना चाहिए। As Matt Ara was attacked in 2015 when five men broke into a house in the middle of the night. और हमारे कमरे जिस कमरे में हम सो रहे थे उस कमरे की दरवाजे पे दस्तक हुई जोर जोर से दरवाजे को लात मार के वो अंदर दाखिल हो गए दो पुलिस वर्दी में थे और तीन लोगों ने आम कपड़े पहने हुए थे शलवार कमीज पहले मेरे मियां के हाथ पांव बांधे और मेरे हाथ इस तरह पीछे की तरफ इस तरह कर के और बांध लिए मेरी बच्चियों को भी बांध दिया और वो बार-बार वो पश्तो में गालियां दे रहे थे आज तेरी तबाही का दिन है तो सर फिर बस उस आदमी ने मेरी जद खाक में मिलाई, उसने मेरा रेप कर दिया। दूसरे कमरे में मेरी बच्चियों की चीखों की आवाज आ रही थी। उस वक्त मैं ये समझ रही थी खुदा न खासता वो मेरी बच्चियों की जद खराब कर रहे। फिर वो दूसरा आदमी मुझे उसी कमरे में बेड पड़ा हुआ था। बेड पे मुझे उठाया और � वो एक ने शलवार के साथ खुद को साफ किया बाहर दो पुलिस वाले खड़े तमाशा देख रहे थे Did they say anything throughout the attack that that made you think it was because of your work as a polio vaccinator वो बार बार इस दौरान जब घर में जैसे कमरे में घुस गए तो वो बार बार ये अल्फाज इस्तेमाल कर रहे थे ना कि तुमने पराये बच्चों की जिंदगी तबाह कर दी आज तुम्हारी तबाह क्या देने Do you want to go back to your work giving the polio vaccine to children? This is the... वजह से उन्होंने मुझे टारगेट किया तो मैं मैं कहती हूँ कि बस मैं काम वो करूँ ना क्यों ना करूँ Despite these attacks, exceptionally brave women keep going out and knocking on doors. ये तो हम जहाद कर रहे हैं अपने बच्चों के लिए अपने बच्चों की बेहतरी के लिए एक फौजी महास पे लड़ रहा है और हम लोग यहाँ पे पोलियो के साथ लड़ रहे हैं ये सूरा यासीन हॉली कुरान यानी के कुरान का दिल है ये इसलिए पढ़ते हैं फिर अपनी टीमों की फाजत के लिए सब के लिए दुआ करके तो फिर निकलते हैं घर से। This is Arangi, Pashtun neighbourhood in Karachi, which historically has had lots of resistance to the vaccinators. Just a year ago, one of them was assassinated in this in this neighbourhood for doing this work. Immediately after the attack, what effect did it have on you and your team? कोई काम करने के लिए तैयारी नहीं था तो यहाँ के लोग डरते भी थे ये भी हमने जब शुरू किया डॉक्टर साहब ने और ये हमने शुरू किया तो उस वक्त हमने लोगों को इकट्ठा किया तो लोग डर रहे थे जो मैं तो नहीं डर रही थी लेकिन लोग डरते थे लोग डरते थे और लोग कहते थे कि नहीं मार देंगे हम पोलियो पिलाने नहीं जाते लेकिन उनके अंदर जज्बा और उनके अंदर मैंने कहा मैं सबसे पहले आगे जाऊंगी तुम लोग मेरे पीछे पीछे आओ।
Kalida is um, just incredible. I mean, to see a woman taking as much of a leading role as she is and arguing back against people who refuse the, the vaccine, men, and bombing around on a, on a quad bike is, uh, is unheard of in this area. इस घर में दस बच्चे इतने सख्त रफ्यूजर थे ये कि इधर से गुजरने नहीं देते थे दरवाजा बंद चलो तो विनते कर करके भाई ऐसे नहीं ऐसे अब इन अब खुद कहते हैं आ जाओ डिस दिस मेक यू थिंक यू कैन कन्विंस एवरीबॉडी इन शाला इन जो हम टीम और हमारे सब कर रहे हैं इन खत्म हो जाएगी Khalida and her colleagues have turned things around and they are now close to winning the war against polio. If there is any group of volunteers that really deserve a Nobel Prize is one of them because they really went out to work knowing that they may not come back that night. Dr. Elias Dury has been instrumental in the global fight to eradicate polio for the last two decades. We used to have 350,000 cases a year globally. 2010 We had more than 1,000 cases. Last year, 2015, the total number of cases will be less than 100. Our hope is that 2016 will really give us good news of truly finishing the job and saving millions of children from paralysis and death. Earlier this season, we looked at the devastating effects that American-made cluster bombs are having on the civilian populations in Yemen. But we wanted to take a look at the larger picture unexploded munitions in other parts of the world. So we went to Southeast Asia, where millions of these controversial weapons are still taking lives every day. I just crossed the Thai-Burmese border. I'm in Kurdistan state. I'm embedded with the KNLA that's the Kurdistan National Liberation Army these rebels are locked in a decades long civil war with the Burmese government both sides have used one of the most primitive but deadly kinds of indiscriminate weapons landmines i asked the soldiers about landmines and they produced this this is a homemade landmine uh, that they carry with them this little wooden part acts as a pressure plate when somebody steps on it this thing goes boom But the problem with these homemade weapons and the military grade explosives that the Burmese government is planting is that it's often the civilian population who sees their impact. In nearby villages we met some of these civilian victims. Tomo dai khati do kunya ta. Uh, jati do kunya ta no dai. Uh. These weapons are often used in areas where the local people lack the proper resources to treat their condition. So for victims in Burma, that often means traveling to neighboring Thailand just to get help. Mamia Win was 18 when she triggered a landmine. The Hapa An Clinic has provided physical therapy to hundreds of landmine victims in the last decade. Many of them show up with crude makeshift prosthetics that they've constructed on their own. These are homemade prosthetics. Right. Before they receive our service, they have this they make by themselves. And this is just a rod and and a and a ball bearing. Crazy. These limbs are in constant demand. because as Dr. Yeshua Moser explained to us the threat from unexploded ordnance can last for decades after a conflict is over anti-personnel mines aren't something that spoils like milk because of the extraordinary number of civilians that were injured and killed by these things in peacetime it's what we call a weapon of mass destruction in slow motion it brings us to Burma's neighbor 
right next door. You have Laos, slightly different problem, uh, but still a very deadly problem, right? Yes. In Laos, you have much more of a cluster munition problem due to the aerial bombing they experienced during the war. That war was the Vietnam War, and the country dropping those deadly weapons was the United States. In an effort to halt enemy supply lines that ran through Laos, the U.S. began carpet bombing this small country using a highly controversial weapon known as a cluster bomb, which breaks apart midair into dozens of smaller explosives. The problem is not all of these bomblets actually explode, essentially making them landmines dropped from the sky. I'm in Savannakhet province, Laos. This area is one of the most heavily bombed regions in the world. During the Vietnam War, the U.S. dropped more ordnance on this teeny country than they did on all of the Axis powers in World War II. And this has left millions of unexploded ordnance in the ground here in Laos. Yesterday, uh, there was an accident in a bow. Uh, a local person blew off his hand. Nick Torbay runs the Laos branch of Halo an organization that has cleared tens of thousands of explosives in Laos. He explained to us how cluster munitions work. A cluster munition is designed to explode on impact, so it's designed like an artillery shell or a bomb. It's designed to hit the ground, go bang, but a fairly large number didn't explode. The BLU-26, they were dropped in containers containing hundreds of these in an individual bomb that would break up in the sky, and hundreds of these would fall towards the ground, spinning in the air, and then impact on landing. You can see the small little ball bearings within it, and the idea is these ball bearings spread out uh, and become a fragmentation designed to, to, to kill people. Is there a render safe procedure for these? No, for cluster munitions, you can't really render them safe. You can use, you know, explosive effects to make them explode, but in a less violent way. Nick took us out on one of his group's missions to the remote village of Nahuanam. For more than 40 years, Nahuanam has dealt with leftover cluster munitions surrounding their village. Halo actually has to set up a base camp from which to operate. They've done that in this village. This tent behind us is where they'll live for the next three weeks. But before we could even begin our search, a local elder pointed us to an armed American bomblet, which was just a few hundred feet from camp. He's leading us to where he thinks he found it right now. How did you find this? That's the mining cup. Do you know people who have been hurt by these before? We watched as Halo prepared a safe detonation procedure for this unexploded ordinance, just paces from the village. So basically what's happening now is, as you can see, there's farmers, there's villagers, there's a village right over there. So Davide's spreading his team out, deploying them to warn off people that there's about to be an explosion. This container has the blasting caps in them. Once he takes that blasting cap, he puts it right into the top of this explosive. It's placed down in the hole and explodes that bomb, hopefully in a safe manner. There's nothing left of it except for these little ball bearings, which are actually still hot from the explosion. These are what are designed to shred flesh right here. Where one bomblet is found, there's almost always more nearby. So the team has to search the entire area. Their job is to map contamination. The team leader, Vandra, set out a small 50 by 50 meter box, and they all work in towards the center, doing a, a sweep of the area. Try your knee. Oh, there's another one. It's the same type of munition, another BLU-26. Here's 
there's another one. Sam! Sam! No! And it isn't just cluster bombs. The area is littered with unexploded ordnance of all types. Sam! Sam! No! And these hidden bombs are so pervasive that a new generation has had to learn to spot them. Where the lock was? Where the vehicle was? Today. They're uh, leading us to it right now. Oh, yeah, there it is, right there. Huh? Do you know where these came from? This is why explosives like landmines and cluster munitions are so dangerous. Because decades after a conflict ends, the original victims, as well as their children and grandchildren, are still paying a price. Even though Halo is working constantly to neutralize these bombs, there are still millions more. And there will continue to be millions more to neutralize around the world because American-made cluster munitions are still being dropped today. Despite international calls to stop using these weapons, the U.S. has used them in both Iraq and Afghanistan and has armed Saudi Arabia with the bombs it's used on highly populated areas in Yemen. For more than two decades, Senator Patrick Leahy has crusaded against the use of these indiscriminate explosives. You buy these for three or four dollars. This much pressure would have taken my arm, and in this case, most of my head off. Senator Leahy told us the U.S. needs to take a leadership role in banning these weapons. If we're not willing to give up these things, isn't it easier for a country that has nowhere near our power to say, wait a minute, the most powerful nation on Earth won't do it. Why should we? We have some in the Pentagon who think that you should never limit any weapon. I mean, there are those after World War I who said, well, maybe we shouldn't ban poison gas. We might need it at some point. No. Because the human rights didn't get rid of it, and we didn't need it. The war is over. Landmines are still there. How many generations are going to continue to die because they were used?